Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the Buffalo Bar, which is a bent bar that I have up above that you guys can see me squatting with. And it's one of these things that we need to talk about. I bought one, people are asking about it, and we should go into some detail on this. In fact, I should probably talk more about the specialty bars in general, because specialty bars have been developed for strength and conditioning, for powerlifting, everything else. And people who are coming from the other world, just the, the bodybuilding world or new to lifting and all this, they don't understand all these specialty bars and they don't realize um, that these are tools that are used by top coaches all over the world, right? A lot of them were developed for powerlifting, a lot of them were developed for other sports, but they all overlap and everyone uses all of these bars these days. And they have a multitude of uses and what they do is that they allow us to do different things to make certain lifts easier, harder, address weak points and strength curves, uh, reduce different inflammation and stress on certain joints and different phases of training, and they allow us to still focus on basic lifts to do the majority of our strength and size gains. It's like I always tell people, you can follow a program that's basically squat, bench, and deadlift-ish based and train for anything. And this is what plenty of coaches have realized all the way up into the NFL and, and MMA. Uh, so these things all overlap and what all these bars do is they allow you to manipulate these different variables and manipulate different training angles and things. Now the Buffalo bar serves a couple of different purposes. As most of you can see it has a permanent bend in it. This is not the same thing as training with a bent bar. I've said in the past and someone has already brought this question up of is, is that any different from just training with a bent bar? You said bent bars are dangerous. I don't understand. Well, bent bars roll on you. This bar is very bent. It's permanently bent and it's rated to hold a, a thousand pounds. All right. If you take an already bent bar and you put heavy weight on it, you can actually get hurt. You can actually get hurt as a result of it just from the bar bending further and breaking. This isn't going to bend further. A thousand pounds won't bend this bar any further. Also, it's not going to roll because the bend is permanent. Well, usually when you have a partially bent bar, people tend to grab them in a way they don't have it pointed clearly with the bow up. And if you're not perfectly up and down on the bow and you're gripping something, it can roll on you and injure you, particularly on the bench press. The bench press being the worst offender. Right, bench pressing with a bar that's bent and it rolls because you're you don't have the bow and the bar pointed upwards. Do you grip it the other direction, which is what oftentimes happens when it settles in the rack, due to just a small bend that's not a controlled permanent bend, uh, the bar will roll and hurt you. So this is a totally different beast. Totally different beast, because you always use this bar with the bow pointed towards the ceiling. And so once you set it in on the squat, people say, Why why the squat? Um, it lets you put your hands in a different position. It's easier on your shoulders. Doesn't matter whether you're high bar or low bar squatting with it. It allows you to have your hands further down. And if you're doing large volumes of squatting, that is simply easier on your shoulders. That's one of the biggest complaints you have with the squat is that it's it can be hard on the shoulders, particularly if you're doing lots of it. The buffalo bar eliminates that. So much so that people oftentimes do it year round as their primary bar for squatting. A lot of elite lifters do. Now people will say, but is it different? No, not really. What you find is that, and this is what coaches find all over the world, if you can squat 500 pounds with a buffalo bar, you can walk into a meet and squat 500 pounds with a competition bar. In other words, you could change them out. If you squat 500 pounds, RPE 9, on Monday and you change to a normal Olympic bar or stiff bar the next Monday, you're probably going to find the 500 pounds to be the same RPE. Some people find the Buffalo bar slightly harder because in some cases you have to get some of your hips and other things a little bit tighter. So a few people out there squat slightly less with the Buffalo bar, particularly if they're still learning how to squat. But once you have your squat mechanics down and you know how to get tight and brace, you shouldn't see any difference. So because of that, it has direct carryover. It directly trains your back squat in a one-to-one -one ratio because the, the, the bar path is the same, mechanics are the same. What it mainly does on the squat though is just get, puts you in a more comfortable shoulder position. It's easier to get your elbows down 
it's easier to keep your hands in a position and your elbows in a position that doesn't put stress on the shoulder joint. Therefore, for large volumes of squatting, it's just it's easier on your shoulders. And if it's easier on your shoulders, you can do more of it. And it allows for people to do more benching and pressing and other stuff uh, without, without irritating their shoulders. So if you combine that with something like, say, a football bar, you could essentially have a stress-free workout on benching and squatting for your shoulders while still getting all around strong. So that's what it's used for on the squat. Now for the bench press, you guys have been watching me do speed work with it all this time. All right, it's got a bend in the bar. It increases the range of motion. So if you have a four inch bend in the bar, or a three inch bend in the bar relative to where your hands are, because how wide you grip it, it's gonna create a larger and larger uh, hand position of how far your hands are located down relative to the bow. What's the reason some people claim the bench press isn't the best chest exercise? You can't get a full range of motion. Some people feel that dumbbells are superior because you can get a deeper stretch at the bottom. The buffalo bar eliminates the benefit of dumbbells. It eliminates the primary benefit of the dumbbells. It gives you a longer range of motion. However, it does so in a way that's, again, more stable than trying to stabilize two dumbbells, and therefore you can use slightly more weight. So it gives you the longer range of motion benefit of a dumbbell combined with the ability to use a heavier weight of the barbell. For some people, this isn't beneficial, though. If you have a really small chest and long arms, small rib cage, particularly not a lot of meat on your chest yet, the range of motion could be excessive. You know, because some people talk about, they're like, oh, don't touch your chest, it's too much strain on your shoulders. Well, you gotta learn how to bench, first of all. But two, for some people who, are, who have a very slight build, they're still putting meat on, this might be too much. But once you're pretty thick, this allows you to do some benching with a longer range of motion. And it allows you to do so and get a deeper stretch on the chest at the bottom. So if you're trying to increase range of motion for hypertrophy, you're trying to train to get a better stretch reflex, or you just want some variation, this will do the job. People, they also make a lot of some football bars, bars with a camber like um, Chris Duffin does. He makes one over at Kabuki Strength. It's actually a fantastic bar. It's just more than I care to spend on a bar. Uh, I don't need anything of that, that level of quality. And that's come up too. If people are like, why aren't you buying any of Chris Duffin stuff? Guys, if I had a big gym with a dozen elite lifters, I would. For my personal use, his bars literally cost triple what I'm paying for, for bars that I will not be able to break. All right? It's nothing to do with the fact that his quality isn't phenomenal. Chris Duffin makes phenomenal bars. Phenomenal bars. But they're very expensive. And yes, I have thousands of dollars tied up in my gym, but man, I just don't want to spend an extra $2,000 on bars more than I have to to meet my needs. I don't have unlimited funds, just like most of you don't. So I go the slightly cheaper route. But that doesn't mean that his stuff's not awesome. So I just wanted to clarify that. So what we find with the Buffalo Bar here is that it's multifaceted in regard to this. Some people like to overhead press with it too, by the way. So it's useful for squatting. It's useful for overhead pressing. Now, I tried to use it for rows personally and found I couldn't make it work. So for the extra range of motion, you can't get it to go the other direction. Because of the way that mine is built, you can't really get the bow pointed down, which is good. It won't stay there. You won't be able to grip it and pull it up. And that's what you want, though, because you don't want that usually on, a, on the other thing. If you were to squat or bench that way, just like with a bent bar, you could get hurt. But it's very stable. It doesn't roll. It doesn't roll at all. Now, in theory, people could even use it if they wanted to just double overhand deadlift. And, and pull what strap on destiny did to cheat the grip thing maybe some people could use it for deadlifting for that same purpose right they could because the bar won't roll due to the bend in it so a person could probably double overhand grip more if they didn't want to mess with mixed grip or hook grip they could probably do that for, for you know again something to do with grip training uh it would be an option possibly for that, although I haven't tried it. So that's the thing with a lot of these specialty bars. They have uses, and most of them have more than one use. That's what makes them so fantastic. They have more than one use frequently. And it makes them very versatile tools to add to your repertoire because they can adjust 
angles and ranges of motion and centers of gravity on a lot of your big classic lifts and create entirely new exercises that work new weak points. Right, that's a real advantage for giving us some exercise variation. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.